Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. It's great to have you here today. My name is Soleil and I garden in a zone 5B in mid Michigan. And we are having temperatures that are just going up and down like a roller coaster right now. There's no telling what to expect any day of the week. Right now we're getting ready to go back into a cold patch after most of our snow match melted. So today what I'd like to do is some things around my plant room and I'm going to get started some ranunculus. I have seen people grow these on and I have watched them bloom and I think they are absolutely beautiful and I finally have given in and ordered some corms so I have those and they are pre-soaking. As we wait for those to pre-soak we're going to prick out some pansies because I had some pansy seedlings that I have sowed that have really grown on quite a bit. So I want to prick them out and pot them up into bigger pots and give them some room for the roots to grow and be able to water them and add some fertilizer so they can grow on. And then I'll give you a really quick update around the plant room just to show you how my amaryllis bulbs are doing because they're doing great. I've got some new blooms that I'd like to show you. All right, let's get started. So in order to get ranunculus started, they have to go into a pre-soak. So this is just room temperature water and they're being soaked for three to four hours. And they've already been soaking for about three hours now. And there are 20 of these. And this is called the Secret Garden Mix. I got these from uh, Eden Brothers and I think that they are absolutely gorgeous. They're shades of pink and purple and they really do remind me of a secret garden. So I can't wait for these to be potted up and blooming and I think they will make a wonderful addition to the garden. So let's set these aside and I will show you my pansy seeds. So here are my pansy seeds and I think they look absolutely fantastic. These are called Berna Velvet Blue. So these have grown really well. We have quite a few of their own true leaves. There are some that are smaller than others, but they're starting to crowd each other out. So I really thought it was time to get them potted up into a bigger pot. So what we have here is a tray of square pots and they're just in their regular container. I'm reusing these. Um, I get these from a, a local nursery where they grow four inch containers like this and they have a special price on them for perennials and it's a great deal if you're willing to grow them on. There's something like maybe four dollars a piece uh, but they're less if you buy them in bulk so I'd like to get a big tray and now I can reuse them because they are really high quality and thick plastic pots. So here we have just some regular miracle Grow potting mix and what I'm going to do is just pre-moisten it a little bit, not as much as I normally would for potting up actual seeds. There we go. And then I'm just going to use this to fill my container squares. What I'm going to do is probably put about four of these pansies into each one of these square pots. I'm not sure how many pansies we have, but we certainly have a lot. If need be, this can actually, this actually has um, 15 pots in it. And so if we have four per pot, that can hold about 60 seedlings. And I think when I bought these seeds, there was 50 of them in the pack. So there should be plenty of room.
picking out can be a fairly delicate process, but it doesn't have to be too hard. Honestly, one of my favorite things to do is just take as much of, a, of it as I can out and then kind of let it fall on itself. So we'll see how we do with this. It is very moist because I've been gone uh, for several days from the house and I didn't want these to dry out while I was gone. So we'll see how this comes out. Not bad. I see lots and lots of seedlings in here. So exciting. Okay. So now I have this handy dandy little scoopy shovel. I don't know what you would call it, but I think it's a bonsai tool. And all I'm gonna do is make sure I get these tucked way down in. And it doesn't matter that I don't have these containers all the way full to the top with soil because um, what is important is that later if I want to, I can lift this soil block out and put some soil at the bottom and then fill in around them again once the roots fill out. It's better to have a little bit less soil right now in these containers because um, you don't want to overwater. Be gentle with your seedlings. You don't want to break a stem because if you do, it will not live. Once you've done the pricking out process a few times though, you'll learn just how easy it is. Hold your plant by the leaves, and again, not by the stem, that will help to prevent you from breaking a stem. And you just wanna make sure to get the roots all the way down in there. You can see we have some very, very small seedlings, and I may not even pot those up. Like this size is really healthy, isn't it? And you just wanna gently tease these apart so that you don't break the roots either. See, we have two seedlings right here. Just pull them gently apart. From the soil down gently around the roots, you wanna make sure that there's plenty of contact going on there and not any air pockets. Watering in always helps with that process as well. Now if you don't have, um, or if you have some seedlings that don't look that great at this stage, it's a really great time to kind of weed those out from uh, the keepers, if you will. Some people like to keep every single seed that they sow, which is fine as well. Sometimes I feel like that too. Something very special about growing things by yourself from seed every single time. Now that these have um, one, at least one set of true leaves, most of them have two or three sets of full leaves. 
like I said, I'm actually going to water these in with some fertilizer. And it's good to kind of dilute the fertilizer the first time that you use it. This way it doesn't send uh, these little seedlings into shock because they don't have a lot of roots or a lot of leaves to support yet. This potting mix itself is an organic fertilizer. Um, it has some food in it for the plant. Okay, well we did manage to get these potted up and they look pretty good. They are all pricked out. And what I'm gonna do now is just give them a little bit more water and like I said, a teeny bit of fertilizer. And in some of these trays, you'll have noticed I actually did more than four because I there was a lot more plants in here than I thought. There was a lot of very small ones and then some were obviously larger. And so I really wanted to pot as many as I could. So I definitely did more than four per little cell here. But I think they're gonna work out just fine the way that they are. Just want to get the soil settled around them. There we go. And as the light hits them, some of them have a little bit of bend in their stems now that they've been pricked out. 
but what will happen is when the light hits them, they will grow up towards the light. And it will be very important at this stage that I keep the light nice and close to them so that um, they don't get leggy. So I'll go ahead and put my little label back in here. And let me grab the ranunculus. I think the soaking has gone really well. So you can see how nice and white and plump most of the roots are on these. And those are just gonna go right down into some soil. And we're gonna use the same pot that those pansies just came out of because they won't need more, much room to grow until they actually put out their real roots. So again, I'm just gonna use some potting soil and just firm it up pretty well here. And then I'm gonna place these uh, pointy side down into the potting mix. And there's 20 of these. So there should be enough room just in this small container to at least get them started. And then we will move them up and pot them up into that tray that I just put the pansies in after these have some good roots established. Might not have enough room in one of these. Sometimes I'm a really good estimator of space and other times not so much. It's going to be real close. I guess I'm just going to try to find some spots for them. Smush them in a little bit tighter than I might want to otherwise, but that's okay. Yeah, that fits just fine, at least for me. So now I'm going to take my, I'm trying to find my mister here. Okay, here we go. And I'm really going to mist these in. Then I'll put a light layer of soil over the top of this and mist again. Again, this is a very light layer of soil. This is just to cover up the tops. And as we mist this down, it will help the soil to kind of push down around those. And we don't want it too wet because we do not want them to rot out, but we certainly do not want them to become dry again because then they will not root like we want them to. So I think this looks great. And I'm just gonna put this on my tray, but first I need to make a label. So these are the secret garden. Mix ranunculus. And I will not be putting a humidity dome or anything like that over these. I'm just gonna set them into their tray. I'm gonna empty my water from the ranunculus soaking and then I'll show you uh, the plants. So we'll start really quick over here. I just wanna show you how many other seedlings I have of the violas that I have growing. And then I did not show you when I sowed the geraniums, but I do have some geraniums growing back here, some maverick pink and some maverick violet. So excited about those. They're starting to get their true leaves. So soon those will need some fertilizer as well. 
And just as an update, here is what my cannas are currently looking like. They are looking great. I'm really excited about the growth on those. And then this is my pea plant that was just from some seeds my son planted. And here's a pea actually growing on it indoors. Isn't that cute? And then if we go down here to the bottom shelf and peek behind the cannas, I had a disappointing turnout from the Potomac Snapdragons so far. Really not happy with them um, and their germination rate for me. I don't know why they did this. I've never had a problem with Snapdragons before, but maybe they'll do better in the winter sowing. I did put them out on the deck in a winter sowing kit, so hopefully they'll do better that way. And then let's take a quick look over here at my amaryllis. Aren't these gorgeous? The red lion, which is this one, just finished one of its bloom stalks and I cut it off, but it has another one that is getting ready to open. And then I don't know what kind this is. This is a, a stripey one, red stripes. Isn't that pretty? It reminds me a little bit of like a candy cane or something, but it's so beautiful. And then there's another red lion down here that is getting ready to open up as well. Isn't that gorgeous? And so I've just uh, clipped a couple of stems. My pink one just finished blooming. So that one is spent, but I also thought one of the bulbs that I had down here, which I thought I had lost due to rot, i show you here. It actually has a bud coming up. So this one looks like it's actually going to grow and flower, which is amazing. So again, all of these I had uh, put outside during the summer to gather the sun's good vitamins and chlorophyll and all of the stuff that they needed to store into their bulbs over the winter. And then I brought them in and cooled them off. And now they are blooming at a time when very little else is. So, so fantastic to have these. I also heard from many of you that you have grown hibiscus from seeds. And so I was excited to hear about your successes in growing them from seed and them being true to the parent plant. So I have saved some seeds from mine and I am going to try to sow those and see if I can get them to germinate for my sister because she really likes my evening rose hibiscus. So thank you so much for commenting about that and sharing your experiences. I'm sure uh, many other people besides just myself really appreciated knowing um, how well that works. So thanks for sharing. And I hope you enjoyed this video as well. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.